Hello and welcome to this little makeup chat video. In this makeup chat video, we're gonna be applying some makeup and we're gonna be chatting. So I thought that name would be very fitting, makeup chat. No, but really I got some products that are new to me that I wanna try out. They're not necessarily new, but I have a handful of things that I wanna try and test out. I wanna hang out, I wanna just chill. I wanna discuss some things. I had you guys over on my Insta story submit questions to me about, you know, what whatever you want to know about. I just said, hey, ask me ask me a question. What do you want to know? Could be makeup related, beauty related, pregnancy related, whatever. What's up? Let's talk. Let's discuss. So thank you everyone who submitted a question. I'll be answering some of those today in this video and we're just going to be hanging out. So you know what I got. I got my chai tea latte. Delicious. What are you drinking? What are you having? What are you doing? Maybe you're doing your makeup with me. Maybe you're doing some laundry like I like to do when I'm watching YouTube and because laundry is like never ending. But I don't know, just, just hang out, just come chill. I got my daughter's swivel chair, her little office chair that she has because this tummy is getting real, real big. If you didn't know, I'm pregnant. And um, my normal chair is horribly uncomfortable. And this is a game changer. And I need to get an adult size because I need even more cushion, but like, oh my goodness, I love it. Anyways, I'm ready to dive into some makeup and some questions, answers, answers for your questions. And if you are too, then all you need to do now is you sit back, hang out, whatever, and keep on watching. Okay, so like I said, I only have like a handful of products that are newer to me. So I'll list them all down in the description box. So in case I'm not mentioning what product I'm using because I'm kind of focusing more on chatting and questions, you can just check it down there. But to start off, I'll let you know what I am using. I'm gonna be using the Tula Face Filter Blurring Moisturizing Primer. I just got this when Ulta was having the 21 days of skincare sale or whatever. I think that, is that still going on? I think it is. Um, so I've heard really good things about this. I tried it one time, not gonna lie. I was a little confused. It has like a tint to it. And yeah, I don't know. It seems like it might be good on days that I only really wanna wear makeup. Cause look at, you rub it in and it changes color. But yeah, I didn't pay attention enough to notice anything like different on my skin. And I was using makeup that day. Like I am, like I will be today, but I want to test it and see. It seems like a perfect situation for me because I have dry skin, this is moisturizing, and usually I use a moisturizing primer and a pore filling primer. This is supposed to be pore blurring as well. It's moisturizer, pore blurring in one, but we'll see. So I'm gonna be applying this, and then for my foundation and concealer today, I'm gonna be using the NYX Born to Glow foundation and the concealer, because it's been a hot minute since I used that pairing. Okay, so for questions, I figured I'd start with the more like light and fluffy ones, and then there's some more, you know, hard hitting questions in here, some more deep dive into my soul type of questions that we'll do, and then we'll round it back out with some more fluffy ones. So to start off, I was asked like to tell a little bit about myself, like my height, birthday, zodiac sign, just some like fun things, fave foods, fave makeup brands. So uh, my height, I'm 5'4", and birthday is the 27th of this month, January, so right around the corner, which means I am an Aquarius. <laughs> and boy, boy am I an Aquarius, okay? Um, I didn't really like believe much necessarily in my zodiac sign growing up. I thought I was nothing like it. And as I became an adult and put outside of my normal, I guess comfort zone. I grew up in like a very small town. Um, I was, I, I meandered on back to my astrology description, <laughs> Aquarius. I was like, oh wow, I am such an Aquarius. I don't know if that came just like because as an adult, I've just grown into myself more or that the situationally, I realized that I'm such an Aquarius, yeah. My husband is a Gemini. He is such a Gemini, let me tell you. Daughter's a Cancer, she is such a Cancer. Funny story, one time, my husband Jeff and I, we were, I think we might have just been dating at the time, maybe engaged, and we were talking about signs for some reason, and I was just like, oh my goodness, Geminis, they're so crazy, because like, that's the stigma, right? That's the like thing, that Geminis are so two-faced and stuff. Well, he turns to me and he's like, I'm a Gemini, and I'm like, what? Yeah, and then I read about it like a, a more non-bias way. I mean, I must have always read really biased things. And I was like, oh, 
you know, it's not, Gemini's are not two-faced. They just have this way about them and I just admire it so much from my husband. It's one of my favorite things about his personality that his, he's able to adapt and adjust to situations in an authentic way. This is nothing about me. This is totally about him, but that's okay. I, I love him so much and I just thought that that was so cool and it's like, wow, like you really are. And I just think that that's so neat and I, I, I really admire it. I admire him, it for him and he's just able to wear, you know, his heart on his sleeve. I I feel like I'm pretty open here on YouTube. This is like where I'm comfortable at. This is my comfort zone. But in day-to-day -day life, I'm pretty, I have a lot of walls up. It takes a lot for me to like get to know someone and let somebody get to know me. I'm very guarded. So that's where the Aquarius comes in. And yeah. So that's that. Uh, somebody also asked favorite food. I love sushi, which I can't have right now, obviously, but I also love tacos, nachos, burritos, all the things. I'm a big foodie. I do love food, but not only like going out to eat, I also love to cook. I love, I love it. And you know what? Through this pandemic, I always joke about, I don't mind cooking so much. I do miss like the interaction of going out, you know, with restaurants and just like, the experiences, but I don't mind cooking so much as I cannot stand all these dishes. <laughs> dishes all the time. Favorite brand, favorite makeup brand. That's hard to say because there's not one singular brand that I love every single thing that they've ever come out with. It's, I, I just kind of like pick and choose, you know, my favorites. So that's hard. Yeah, that's really hard. Okay, next question. Favorite YouTubers that you like to watch? As far as beauty related content, I love Rob Beauty Christie, Samantha Ravindall. I love Jessica Braun and she's both beauty and lifestyle and they do vlogs too. I love her and her husband's channel, Tyler Travels TV, cause they kind of, you know, they go coincide. If you haven't checked them out yet, they, are just so chill to watch, so relaxing. And it's just, it's like a part of my routine, you know, to like sit back and do my chores while they do theirs. And I don't know, I just love it. She's so chill and I really enjoy that. There's some mommy channels that I've recently started watching. Not so recently, just since I've been pregnant. Brittany Balin is one. I really enjoy her videos. They're super chill, but very informative. It's just like kind of about her journey with pregnancy. And now her daughter, I think is six months old now. And then Olivia Zappo too. She has a lot of really good like informative videos. So I love both of them. If you like anti-MLM content, Chelsea over at CC Suarez, she is hilarious but very thorough, very well researched. I love her, she's hilarious, oh my goodness. Um, I like binge watching her videos and yeah, I, I watch a lot of YouTube. There's definitely some others that I do watch, but those are like, those are like my mains, you know, that like I pretty much don't miss an upload. Oh, also Leah Janae, she's awesome and I always forget how to pronounce it, Leora Loves Makeup, I think. If you like TJ Maxx hauls and things like that and like shop with me's, they do those a lot. Those are really fun. Dude, look at how nice and glowy that is. I was gonna say that combo, but I mean, it is, yeah, I mean, it is a combo, born to glow combo. I haven't done that in so long and it's so nice and it's so glowy, but I wanna beef it up even more. I'm gonna grab my Charlotte Tilbury Holly, Hollywood Flawless Filter. I don't love this. I think you can get dupes for it, but I'm trying to use it up because it was freaking expensive, man. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put it in some certain areas. It was already a really glowy situation, but I just wanna be extra glowy right now. I'm just feeling that. People say, oh, you have such good pregnancy glow. Oh, it's fake. It's 100% just makeup, okay? But thanks for the compliment. That's all I, I really should just say thank you. I know, just take the compliment. Do you have a job career outside of YouTube? And they said, hoping this doesn't come across rude. No, it's not rude at all. Do I have a career? No, I am a stay at home mom, first and for foremost. A little bit of my history, my backstory. I am a licensed cosmetologist, licensed stylist, and I did the salon thing for a long time. And then I went into retail and I was a store manager of a beauty boutique and then on the side, I did do makeup and hair for special events, a lot of bridal, wedding, things like that. Well, when my daughter was born, honestly, everything changed. I was not expecting it. I was completely blindsided by my decisions and the path that I chose to um, take 
thereafter, I was a career person. I was very, this is what I want to do. I'm going to be, you know, I'm a store manager right now. I'm going to be a district manager. I'm going to grow and then I'm going to move and, and just that's what I thought I wanted. Stylist, I, that's, that's kind of a long story, maybe for a different time. I stopped doing it and then I went back to it, which was a mistake, but yeah. Anyways, it took about a year to conceive our first daughter. And I, it was very, you know, it's very stressful, you know, when you go through that, um, dealing with every month is what ifs and what ifs. But even, so when I did finally get pregnant, I was so grateful, so excited, but I didn't ever feel that connection whilst she was in the womb. <laughs> While she was in there, I didn't feel like the, oh, I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm pregnant now. Cool. I'm super excited that we're going to do this thing. I continued to work up until I was able to leave for my maternity leave, which is what, like two weeks before your due date, something like that. And then I was just planning on taking the, in California, you could take up to 12 weeks off with reduced pay. So I decided I would just do that. You know, the moment she was born and placed into my arms, everything, I'm like getting goosebumps, but every, everything changed as cliche as it sounds and i had moms tell me that you know while i was pregnant and i was like okay yeah sure but like seriously and i know it doesn't happen for everybody but everything changed the moment she was placed into my arms like my whole world i felt got flipped in like a positive way but just everything everything changed my priorities in life changed everything was different i just the love and the connection that i felt as soon as she was placed on my chest for that skin to skin moment was just out of this world <laughs> so i had my 12 weeks with her and we decided to extend it without pay and i still had job protection because in california i think it's six months that you can have job protection without them permanently replacing you and then you still have your job back so i i we opted to take the full six months this is such a long-winded answer you just asked if i had a career outside of youtube i don't but i'm gonna give you the whole spiel of what i actually do <laughs> anyways I went back to work at six months. I went back for a year. And while the store that I was working for was very flexible, very accommodating, she, my district manager was so amazing and she really worked with me and my emotions and everything that I was going through. I would cry, I'm gonna cry right now. I would cry on my way to work every single day, leaving my daughter. And we had, you know, her grandma was watching her on, I think I was only, I went back and I was only working four days a week at the eight hours a day when I first returned, just to kind of ease myself into it. So I had my, my, her mother-in-law, her grandmother was watching her two of the days. And then my sister who had just moved down near me, she was doing the other two days. So I had family watching her, but I would cry every day on my way to work. Just my priorities changed so much. I was working at a beauty boutique. So leaving her to like sling shampoo, <laughs> that's what it felt like. It just felt so unimportant to me. And even though I was still, you know, I would consider myself really good at my job, you know, I would do my orders, I would do everything I needed to do. I thought about being with her nonstop and this continued for a year. I did reduce my hours down to three days a week. And again, they were so accommodating. They did everything they could, you know, to accommodate me and keep me and keep me happy. But I wasn't happy, you know, I just, I couldn't, my, I, I just didn't see a future there anymore. I just, it just wasn't gonna work out. So fortunately, and I'm very grateful that we were in the position that I could choose to stay at home with her while she was growing. And at that same time that that was happening, my sister was getting a job that required her more often. So she was only gonna be able to do one day a week. And then at that point, I would have had to have outside help. Listen, I was not getting paid very well there. And it would have been like handing over my paycheck. So it's like, for what, you know? For one day wanting to rise, you know, climb the corporate ladder? No. So we decided as a family that I would leave and stay at home with her. And I'm so incredibly grateful. Um, and I know what a blessing that is to be able to do. And what, what led me to YouTube, okay, so we decided to do that. And at the same time, I decided that I would start doing my makeup and hairstyling for special events again. So I got my kit back together and I started building up again. 
And I would do it like even through working, I would do it like on the side and things, but I was like, okay, I'll do it a little bit more often. I could do it on the weekends and then my husband can be with her and you know, all of that. Like I said, I made that mistake. I forgot how much anxiety I would get surrounding new clients and things. When I would have a client that I knew already, I knew what to expect, I would be fine. But when I didn't, it was just, it just became too much and it's, it was just such a source of stress. So after a while, I decided not to do that either. And at the same time I was deciding to do that, at the same time I decided to leave my job at the as a store manager, start up my makeup company again, I was watching YouTube and Jeff was like, uh, who is this person? What are they talking about? I was like, oh, it's just this makeup channel on YouTube. And he's like, why don't you do that? And I was like, no, what, no. And he's like, no, seriously, you know all this stuff about the beauty industry, makeup, hair, whatever, why don't you start a channel? And I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know why I haven't thought of that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Then became my journey here on YouTube and I've been on YouTube, I'm losing track now, but I think it's been about three years, maybe four. I don't know, I'd have to look. And I started just on my iPhone and uh, I fell in love, you know? All my early videos are awkward and low quality, but I needed to see if it was something that I really wanted to, I probably just powdered my face for like three minutes, but I wanted to see if it was something that I really wanted to invest my time and, you know, energy into and everything. And I found that I was able to film while my daughter was napping and edit when she went to sleep at night and it was just very flexible. And I then had something for myself because I, I always feared that I would lose a part of myself and I love makeup so much. I mean, if you guys watch me, you know, like something about an eyeshadow palette, man, just excites me. So I needed to have something for me as a person outside of being a mom that I could enjoy and do and love. And that was YouTube. So to sum up, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm a YouTuber. I don't have a job outside of this. I have a baby on the way. I am very grateful that I haven't needed to go back to work. And um, you know, YouTube right now, I'm a small little fry. I don't make a ton, but I can help with bills and I can help with my, it helps with my mental health. As weird as that sounds, it's not for everybody I know and I know some people get really stressed out about it, but I love this and I'm gonna continue to do it. And I just, I'm so grateful for it. I think as a, as a new mom, in a city that we don't really know many people, I would have felt very isolated. And having YouTube and Instagram and all these social media platforms where I can connect with all of you guys helps me so much. I mean, that sounds super selfish, but it does. Like I genuinely love this outlet for me so much. I get to be creative, I get to do the things that I love, I get to talk about the things that I love, and I get to do it in a way that's flexible and I can change it with my schedule where I can still enjoy time with my first daughter and my soon-to-be second daughter. And I couldn't be more grateful and thankful for that opportunity. Oh, that was a 10-minute answer. <laughs> but I'm getting deep into things today. These are things that I don't think I've really ever talked about, honestly. Ah, dang it, I had this to try. Well, I'm not like super powdered. Even though I was powdering my face forever, I actually just focused it on the middle. I'm gonna see if I can use this still. The Pacifica Cheeky Cherry Cheek Stain. Lovely sheer color, that's what it's called. And the shade Wild Cherry. Oh! That just squirted out. That looks exactly like the CoverGirl blush, which I do enjoy. Oh yeah, that's going on nicely. It's not really lifting up too much or at all. Good, 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 good. Okay, your girl just went a little too ham on the highlighter. <laughs> Whoopsies, whoops-a-days. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go do my eyebrows really quickly because it's gonna be too hard for me to talk and do them. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, brows on and my skin is looking so glowy. I need to use this combo way more. The only area I'm not really liking is around my mouth. 
it's kind of like creasing a little bit and I think it might be the primer because I don't remember this happening with the Born to Glow before but oh that glow is just wonderful. Okay I don't know what eyeshadow palette to use yet and I want to base it kind of around these so let me use these first this is the this is the stuff that i got during the sephora sale that i hauled a couple weeks ago or a week ago i don't know i have no concept of time this is the milk makeup kush lip balm in the shade bubble and i've been using the green dragon one at night and it works pretty well i almost need to skip a night i need to do like every other night for some reason if i do every night it's just not working as well. But let's try this, this one's tinted. I might need to use like a lip liner or something. I don't know. I mean, it's a balm, Ashley. <laughs> what did you really expect? But I really just wanna try it. That's really pretty. Oh, I like that. Okay, and the Tower 28 lip jellies, these are the two that I kept. I put the other two in giveaways that are still going on right now, I think, yeah. Yes, I think so. Um, but anyways, this is the shade Fire and then the clear one. I haven't tried either yet. I'm gonna try Fire to see how it goes since those tones are a little bit complimentary. I hear such good things about these. Let's see if it's worth all the fuss though. Oh, I have some good pigment on this one. So you can see the difference of the two. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's not sticky. It's very fluid. I don't know how long lasting it'll be, but it is pretty, so. Yeah, now I need to think of a eyeshadow look to do. I have no idea. I gotta go decide. Okay, I think I'm gonna use my Pure Raw Beauty Christie palette and I'm gonna do kind of like an orangey nude look. So I'm gonna be using the nude side and a bit of that orange shade called Am I Orange? <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing while we talk. Okay, so I got a couple of these questions about pregnancy in a pandemic. Am I worried about giving birth during the pandemic? You know, all of those things surrounding that. So in case you didn't know, I am in my third trimester now of pregnancy. I think when I'm posting this, I'll be 31 weeks. Right now it's Tuesday, I'm 30 weeks pregnant. So I got about, about two, two months left, let's just say. And who that's, that's a loaded questions right there. First of all, being pregnant in a pandemic, it's it's had its pros and cons. Like that might be surprising, but for somebody like me, that's pretty much like a homebody as it is. There are things that have been nice where I didn't have to like go to like all these things all the time. I didn't need to do a bunch of stuff. I was able to be at home you know, without any excuses. So that was kind of nice, but it is also on the other hand, really hard not to be able to see family and things and not have them experience just, you know, me going through pregnancy and seeing my bump change and stuff. And I know that's really hard for my mom and sisters, especially. And then when my daughter started back at school in September, that was, during like the height of my first trimester, maybe it was August, maybe August, whatever. And I dealt with a lot of hormonal moodiness. That was really difficult because we were stressed out doing online school, even though she's only in kindergarten, it's a lot. And coupled with throwing up all the time, being constantly nauseous no matter what, my moodiness, my anxiety surrounding this pregnancy. After losing our pregnancy last year, that, well, now that was the year before, but yeah, that all was a lot that I wouldn't have had to go through. I mean, I would have had to go through a part of it without the pandemic, but it was all just, it amplified all of the emotions, you know? So that was very difficult. Second trimester was a lot more gentle with me. Um, the end, during the second trimester too, was my 20 week ultrasound. And that was the first appointment that my husband was actually able to attend. So that was really awesome for him to be able to go and be able to do that because our cases in our area were much lower than, unfortunately they've gone back up. So he's not able to attend any for the foreseeable future until things go back down. But with that being said, with his visits to, you know, doctor visits and stuff, usually he would be able to go to every single one. The pandemic wasn't going on. But because of the pandemic, you know, they were limiting that and I completely understand. But I'm seeing the same doctor that I was seeing with the baby that we lost. And those first, 
you know, I guess up until 20 weeks, those appointments were so difficult to have to do alone. So my daughter was obviously not allowed to go to those appointments either. So my husband would be at home with her and I would have to go to these appointments and everything just felt so raw. And that's probably a lot of reason too, while I was dealing with so many emotional, you know, anxieties and things is, is the baby okay? Is there, is there are things gonna be different this time? Going through all of that, having to go to these appointments by myself and just feeling like you're reliving the same experiences over that are traumatizing was very, very difficult. My husband, he really balances me out and we just, you know, we have a connection. He knows why I married him. So it was really hard not having him right there with me holding my hand going through it. And it was hard for him too, knowing that he couldn't be there for me during those, you know, early pregnancy appointments and things. After, you know, just nine months prior going through everything that we went through. So yeah, that has been hard. I like the day to day, as far as pregnancy and the pandemic, isn't that difficult for me anymore because like I said, I, I would like to be home anyways and I'm very tired all the time and it's uncomfortable to stand, it's uncomfortable to sit, it's uncomfortable to sleep. So it's nice to not have to have an excuse to miss out on things because there's, there's nothing going on. But at the same time, there are definitely challenges that have come with it. And then the question regarding, am I worried about giving birth during the pandemic? Okay, that is something that i didn't let myself think about for most of this pregnancy you know because it's kind of like it is what it is you know baby has to come out one way or another we'll get through it we'll we'll do the thing and that's kind of how i was with my first daughter just like i'll get through it you know i knew and my doctor told me too everything's changing new information's coming out all the time with this pandemic and it, it just there's so many things that's constantly changing from doctor's appointments to birthing, things that their procedures and everything that you, she told me from the beginning, like, don't worry about it until we get a little bit closer. But even still, things can change. You can ask questions, I'll have answers, but those answers might change, you know, the next week or the next day or the next minute. <laughs> so we're always presented with new information and we gotta be a little flexible once we're given that, right? So yeah, I kind of have been putting it out of my mind. And also back when I got pregnant in July, I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking things were gonna take this long <laughs> to wrap up here. I kind of didn't realize how poorly things would be mismanaged and just what a crazy cluster all of this is. So I was a little hopeful, maybe naive, that come March, things would be a little bit better, but obviously things are not at all. And it's something that I've had to start thinking about and it's been a source of stress and I'm just trying not to think about it because things can still change. It's not that I am scared or worried about giving birth during a pandemic. There's just some things right now at this moment that are extremely unfortunate. I had my husband Jeff and my mother in my room with me when I gave birth to my first daughter and they were both tremendous help and Man, my mom, I mean, she's had five kids. She knows the drill. She's also a nurse. She knows the drill. She's definitely a security blanket when it comes to my medical things. <laughs> so knowing right now at this point in time that I can only have one part birthing partner, I don't know, in the room with me, which is gonna be my husband, it sucks not being able to have my mom with me. Like it sucks. There's no other way to say that. And well, I'm not scared and I'm I'm grateful that I've done this before. So I'm a little less nervous, I think, than I would be had this been my first child. <sighs> it still sucks, man, you know, because she knows things and can see things going on and can be an advocate for me because I don't oftentimes speak up for myself and I'm gonna have to, you know, and my husband's gonna have to and it just, it sucks. <laughs> so, there's that and there's also the fact that, listen, I am all for masks. I wear masks, I have no problem. I actually like it. I take walks in the morning and I wear it on purpose because it keeps me warm. It is great, it is a game changer. Wish I discovered it years ago. But right now at this point, they're requiring masks during delivery. And that is very overwhelming for me because 
I have a tendency to hyperventilate. Um, you know, they threw an oxygen mask on me when I was delivering my first daughter and I was just joking with my doctor. I was like, you might as well just sew that oxygen mask on me when I get there because I'm gonna need it anyways. <laughs> But it, it overwhelms me to know that, you know, I'm gonna have to do that. But I know that I will rise to the occasion and your hormones are going and it is what it is and we'll make it work, but yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take the shade Garden State and do something really crazy. I'm gonna just take it on my finger, I don't know why. It's not, it's a matte shade. I don't I don't know why I'm not using a brush, but whatever. And I'm gonna put it in the center and then I'm gonna be putting glitter on top of that. But hopefully that answers your question. Do I have fears? Am I worried? I have some qualms, I would say, but I know that, I guess it is, you know, it is what it is and this vibe is gonna come out and it's gonna be an edited version of what the birthing experience would traditionally be. And with that being said, somebody asked, how are you doing mentally, emotionally, physically, any self-care tips? Well, physically, <laughs> physically, I, um, like I said earlier, it hurts to sit, it hurts to stand, hurts to lay down. Um, and not, not hurts, like painful, just uncomfortable. I'm just like uncomfortable. I am the best from morning until around two or three o'clock. And then after that, which I wake up at six in the morning. So that's that's a big chunk of time. But you know, when two or three rolls around, I'm just like so done. <laughs> and that's usually when my daughter's done with school. So that's kind of sad, but it doesn't matter if I don't do anything that day or if I do stuff around the house or if I film, I feel the same way. So I might as well do some productivity whilst I can, you know? Emotionally, um, this last, I would say about a week, I have been feeling very overwhelmed, very stressed out because I know baby's coming soon and I still have a lot to do. That's a big source of, you know, stress for me right now. And I'm just trying to, trying to take it day by day. I think it's the nesting part of me that's starting to come out is like, I feel like I look around and everything's cluttered and I can clean. And then five minutes later, it's like things aren't clean anymore. And <laughs> that's part of having a kid at home, right? And getting closer to my due date and having anxiety surrounding that. Emotionally, it's been a little bit harder comes and goes this last weekend i really didn't do much and i almost feel like that was worse for me i took the weekend off which i usually try to do some filming or some stuff around the house i took two days off and just vegged out and relaxed and i feel like that almost put me i need to keep busy i'm a busy body and it's hard when you have a body that doesn't let you do things like you normally do but you know I'm trying to take it in stride and I'm trying to give myself grace and try to balance that. You know, I did organize my pantry, so I got that off my list and that felt good to get that done. Just trying to balance, trying to listen to my body. It's, it's, it's hard to want to be productive, but not being able to. So it's a hard balance for me to find. Um, yeah, I mean... Again, part of the reason why I did YouTube is I needed to have something to do while she was sleeping and taking naps and things like that. I needed something for me that can keep me busy. So what am I doing right now? I am taking my Fade Into Hue palette and I'm gonna use some glitters to press on top of the turquoise. Do I have any self-care tips? I, I, not at this point in time. I'm sorry. I don't have any good tips right now. I feel like I have tunnel vision, but also, regarding so many different things. I have like five million tunnels going at once. <laughs> walks, I would say walks. How about that? Self-care, doing, getting, getting moving, getting going as much as I'm able to, but as much as you're able to as well. I didn't take a walk for the last three days because it was a three day weekend. And that I think made a big difference. I've been walking in the mornings and um, because I didn't do that, I almost felt like I needed that. I didn't realize how much I needed it until I stopped doing it. So getting my body moving, getting going. Okay, let's circle back. Let's do something light and fluffy now. That was a lot of me talking about some deeper dive things. Let's finish this out with something more lighthearted. So I had somebody ask, do you have a favorite tinted serum hydrator? Yes. I do, or is it? I think I have it in my bathroom. That's what I use. What I use when I'm just like hanging out around and I don't want much, the Tarte uh, Maracuja 
hydrator. I like that tinted hydrator a lot because I can use it with my fingers and it just, it evens out my skin tone texture, but it's a very light tint. I do like the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better, which you can apply really light with the sponge. And I like that one because you can build up, you don't want to use a brush if you want more coverage and concealer and stuff. It's a little bit more flexible. So those are my two favorites. I'm gonna throw on some lashes and we're gonna wrap up this look right here. I got this little hair right there. That's so annoying. Okay, so look is all done. And yeah, I'm really loving this eye look, you guys. I really, really like it. Sometimes it's my favorite looks when I'm just like hanging out, chatting, and putting on some stuff. I re-upped my lip gloss combo, lippy combo, because with talking and sipping it did start wearing down a lot and i did a little bit of lip liner on there but um there is one other thing one other thing i wanted to say self-care i thought of something <laughs> i was thinking about what do i do for self-care um honestly i do this this is so therapeutic for me i know i kind of touched on it like having something for myself this is something that helps ground me again not ground me I don't know what the word is. It just helps, it helps recenter me. Those are all synonyms probably, but it just, having something that's for you, I think can be a very beneficial thing as far as self-care goes, as far as mental health goes. Makeup is something that I love. So to just sit down and enjoy playing, I just feel refreshed. I feel energized. I feel more clear headed now. Have doing this video helped me a lot, at least for this moment. So if there's anything that you love to do that you could do for yourself, whether it's painting, whether it is organizing, whether it's, I mean, crocheting, taking up a new hobby, taking up a new craft, or just having some time for yourself doing whatever it is that makes you happy. For me personally, when I am too still, too quiet, where my mind can start wandering, that's when I start to notice my emotionalness and more overwhelmed. If I have too many times, too much time to think about everything. And I think that's what happened this weekend for me is I just had too much time to think about everything. And I think you need to think about things. There needs to be a balance, you know, and I just felt unbalanced this weekend. So for me, part of my self care is things like this, you know, talking to you guys here on YouTube and doing my makeup and doing things like that. Cause for me, that's what helps me. So that's pretty much it. I just want to thank you for stopping by and watching my video or listening or whatever, and just hanging out with me and um, getting to know me a little bit more. That, that definitely was a deeper dive into me as a person. And I hope that that gave you some insight. Insight? I don't know. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I hope that you'll subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet. I mentioned this in my last video. If you are subscribed to me and you have a social media platform, if you're on social media, such as Instagram or TikTok or Twitter, or whatever, make sure you're following me over there if you're not yet, because when baby gets here, I don't know how often I'll be able to post on YouTube for those first month or two. And I'll, it'll be easier for me to throw up an Insta story and things like that, do check-ins that way. So if you have that, follow me there. I'll try to update you guys when I can on YouTube, but it's, it's a bigger production to do YouTube and I'm happy to do it, but I know physically I won't be able to for a while. So that is that and thank you again and I'll see you next time. Bye.